called a ghost light. And if you've been in the theater, then you know about this tradition that's dated back to the late 1800s. There has always been a gas light that the theaters kept on after the show to relieve the pressure of the gas lines. But even with electricity, the tradition of the ghost light continues. When the show is over for the day, the ghost light remains on. Practically speaking, theaters can be pretty dark. And so the ghost light is there to provide light for any of the people who are backstage. That way they can find their way out of the theater. It's on just in case the maintenance crew needs it. That way they don't fall into the middle of the orchestra pit or they don't fall off the edge of the stage because normally the ghost light is center stage with just one bare bulb. I'm sure you can Google all sorts of stories about ghost lights. There are other superstitions of it. And supposedly, the ghost light is there and turned on to keep all the ghosts of the theater company. Because the theater ghosts become very restless in total darkness. Superstition says, that the ghost light is there so that the theater ghost may have a light for their own performance. Some theaters, they go so far as to actually close the theater down for an entire day so the ghost can perform all day in the light of the ghost light. And that way they don't sabotage whatever live show is happening. Since mid-March, Broadway has had to close all of their 40, about 40 theaters, all across the street, right there in Broadway. All of the theaters have been shut down. And so think with me, we have this line of theaters, all the doors are closed, all of the seats are empty, and the live music has paused. And all that remains on every one of those stages is light. Since mid-March, churches feel closed. All along Mimosa Street, there have been closings. We pass all sorts of churches in all of our days, all of the churches feel closed. All of them feel like on Sunday mornings, the doors are shut, all the seats are empty, and all of the live music has paused. But in every single one of those faith communities, there still burns one light. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. The darkness did not overcome it. And what feels like closures and what feels like complete virtual school all the time in what feels like not normal and what feels like a pandemic, the darkness does not overcome it. The Gospel of John here begins a little differently than the other three Gospels. The other three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they begin with a genealogy of sorts. They talk about Jesus' birth as it relates to people, the ancestors, the genealogy. But the Gospel of John 
actually starts with a musical. The Gospel of John begins that gospel with the hymn of Christ. I did not read the whole hymn to you. If you want to read the whole hymn of Christ, go to John chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. And then you will see that that hymn actually has three stanzas or three verses. But theologians have called this hymn of Christ a masterpiece. And they call it a masterpiece because of the overture. That's a good Broadway word, overture. It's an overture. And what it does in just those few verses is it sets us in a scene. It refers back to Genesis. God said, let there be light, and there was light. We are already connected to Genesis, and we're learning more about this light, and it gives us an idea of the actor's and the witnesses that are to come. In particular, the gospel talks about John the Baptist because John the Baptist was a witness to the light. After all, John the Baptist stood by the light. There is an African-American, very famous Broadway performer. Um, He's a Tony Award winner. He's in his mid-70s. His name is Andre De Shields, but he began his career in his early 20s, and he recounts his very first Broadway audition. He walked across the stage and auditioned for the lead role in The Wiz, which he did get, and he said it was very obvious to him when he got on stage, the darkness. So it was completely dark around him, and he thought he was alone, but then he caught a glimpse of the ghost light. And he said he realized from that point on, the the ghost light was a part of his life forever. He said every time he went on stage, he knew that the light was with him. There's something about the light coming to life. There's something about hearing the words, but hearing the music and seeing the people and hearing them, seeing all of it put together. It's not enough just to know the words of the hymn of Christ. We have to hear it and see it. That's when it's a lot more moving. I'm a huge Hamilton fan. I can sing for you every single word of every single song of Hamilton. I won't do that right now because I don't want you to hit stop and I don't want you to hit fast forward, but I could. That's what a fan I am. And I was so excited because I finally had tickets to see Hamilton at the Fox Theater. But of course, the performances were postponed for over a year now. So you can imagine how excited I was when they released the movie. It made such a difference to see the production, to see them sing those words, to see everything in lights lit up. It made it so much more moving. Being a witness to the light changes everything. There's another Broadway actress, and she said that she has been on stage on Broadway since she was nine. And she said she just always took the light for granted. At least 50 years later, She found herself at home one night since there wasn't a show to put on. And outside of her New York apartment, she could hear applause. She could hear clapping. And very quickly, she ran to the window thinking surely it was for her, and it wasn't. She saw all of these people cheering and making noises and clapping and all to celebrate the first responders of New York. And so she quickly ran downstairs to join them. And she realized all of these years she had been inside the walls receiving applause. It's now her time to return the applause. It's now become a tradition in New York to make all these noises just to celebrate the first responders. When we see a witness of the light, others will follow. 
Jesus didn't do all of the work of scripture alone. Jesus had brothers and Jesus had sisters and cousins and disciples and apostles. Jesus calls us to be a part of the witness to the life so other people will follow. A great example of that is a teenager here in Atlanta. She's 16 years old, and when she found herself in total virtual mode of school last March, she and her family began to cook meals and take them to people in the hospitals, the workers and the people within it. And sure enough, word spread, and to date, she and her family, through the giving of other people and through the help of other people, have now delivered over 20,000 meals in Atlanta. There's a man in Alabama, and he saw an elderly man who was having a hard time mowing his grass. And so he quickly pulled over and began to mow his grass for him. Word spread, and now in all 50 states, there is a huge movement to teach teenagers and at-risk youth how to mow yards so that everyone can have this essential service done in their homes. When you see a witness, you just want to follow it. And that's really what this scripture is about that we are the hymn of Christ living and bringing faces and bringing names and bringing life to the light. We are the ones that bring the words of the hymn of Christ to people in such a more moving way. We are the people that can radiate God's hope and God's life and God's love and God's peace. So the darkness never overcomes you. And yes, the light has a name. The name is you. The name is me. The name is Chapel Roswell. And in my mind, I picture us all of these lights scattered into our community. When everything feels closed or things feel empty, here we are, people of the light scattered, being a witness. So I wonder for us this week, what are the things we need to do? What are those things that uh, we need to mimic? Who are the people we need to check on? Who are the people that may be experiencing such darkness? They need us. And in what ways are we living in the light? What are the traditions of the light that we're creating? We want to be a place of community and faith. And to do that, we want to know that you are still connected into worship. Because worship is the way that we can always be connected through that light. And so I'm asking you to go online and tell me that you're worshiping. It takes all of two minutes to do this. You go to chapelroswell.com slash live, and there's a connect card. And I'd love for you just to click on that connect card. Give us your name. Give us your number. And just tell us that you're with us. This is an opportunity for us to continue the story. Because that's really how the story continues. The story continues with us knowing that there is work and witness to be done. The first Sunday, I talked to you a little bit about who I am. And the second Sunday, we talked about naming household events. And now it's time for us to name the light in our community right now. And one day, I can't wait for us to be able to break open these doors of Chapel Roswell. All of us flood right back in, and there's not an empty seat in the house. 
and together we will be able to sing all of our favorite Chapel Roswell songs with our favorite Chapel Roswell musicians. But know this, theater says the show must go on. Worship will always go on. So whether it's a Monday, a Tuesday, Wednesday, or a Sunday morning at a regular hour of 11 o'clock, we thank you for being in worship with us. So now, let's go to God in prayer. Gracious and holy Lord, we do indeed thank you for every moment of worship. We thank you for the moments that we see you in our world. And we ask that you show us your face in the small things and in the big things. And Lord, as every day there seems to be changing news or changing regulations, we ask for your peace and comfort in that. And no matter where we are, Lord, no matter what state we're in, no matter what city we're in, no matter which house we're in, we ask that you continue to connect us as your people. And we ask that you always keep us grounded in the firm knowledge that your light lives in each one of us. Amen. Tell the story, sing the song, and stand in the light.